About 10 days ago, I received a request uh, from ICE. Would we be willing to house some detainees? And I said, well, let me, let me think about it. And so they needed an answer right away. And so we got busy. We obviously had to remove some DOC inmates, return those back to the Department of Corrections in order to make room. And we moved out about 150. We had about 50, 60, 70 vacancies or something like that. Uh, but we're prepared to take up to 240 uh, ICE detainees. These are what they call level one individuals, um, simply here in the country illegally. I understand some of them may have misdemeanor uh, offenses on their record. Uh, I don't think so far we've received any of those, but it's possible that they could, nonviolent uh, individuals. Uh, today we have 102 in Bossier Parish. They range from seven or eight different countries, uh, including Nicaragua, China, Brazil, Guatemala, Honduras, Ecuador, Colombia, Sri Lanka, Mexico, and Peru. So I guess you could say literally uh, all around the world, from all over the world. Uh, so far we've had no instances, no, no problems. Um, it's, I think our staff is really seeing uh, experiencing something they've, they've never dealt with before. Uh, some minor hiccups, as you would expect. Uh, the language barrier being <laughs> primarily uh, the main one. Uh, we've uh, put out an all call for any deputies that uh, happen to speak Spanish, and we had a few. Uh, we also employed some uh, school teachers that are out for the summer to come and help, and so, so far so good. Uh, we haven't had really any big problems. Um, the uh, first load we processed was a little bit slow. That was on Monday. Uh, but after the first load, everybody kind of uh, learned what to do and got familiar with it. And uh, so we got 50 something uh, more yesterday and we're on track to get uh, 50 something, uh, another bus load today. So I guess so far so good. Um, we're just a small part of you know President Trump's uh, uh, initiative to uh, stem the flow of illegal immigrants coming into the country and uh, we were already approved we already hold federal prisoners for the marshal service so we were already approved and, and ready to go and so when they call we were able within roughly 10 days to, to make space so, sort of an overview of what we're done what we have done and what we uh, plan to do so far uh, as we go along here so any specific questions or concerns? Yes. Sir. Yes. Uh, so you said you have 102 currently. Correct. Um, are, 102. Are all of those male? Yes, sir. They're all male. Okay. All and, adult males. Yes, sir. And can you read the uh, countries again? Sure. Just so I make sure I have them. Nicarag mm -hmm. Nicaragua, China, Brazil, Guatemala, Honduras, Ecuador, Colombia, Sri Lanka, Mexico, and Peru. Okay. And were all of these individuals held at the same ICE detention facility? It's our understanding most of these hadn't been to a processing center or detention center. They were just recently picked up and put on the bus and came basically straight to us. Okay. Where were they picked up? Uh, South Texas. I don't all know. That, South Texas? Well, South Texas is a big area, so I don't know specifically, but we were but, just told South but Texas. But South Texas. Yes, so at the border, perhaps? Uh, yes, be okay. my assumption. How are you handling translation services for those who are not Spanish speakers? Yeah, and they're not all. We, we've, uh, obviously the people from China, we've been able to figure out some system. Uh, primarily, uh, most concern is the medical screen that we do. We, we certainly need to know if there's any, you know, any medical conditions. Uh, the other stuff will, will take time and we'll work that out. But uh, so far we've been able to manage through interpreters. So you've had some in the community? Yes, ma'am. Which country are the majority of them from? Uh, now that I don't know. Uh, Chief Harris out there, I know that they're pretty evenly uh, dispersed. I would assume Mexico, but we'll ask, and y'all can ask Chief Harris. She's going to lead your tour up at the corrections facility. Right. I imagine most of those men are from China. So. No, no, <laughs> but they're, no, probably not. Honduras and Guatemala. Honduras, Honduras and Guatemala were most of them from. Okay. And how do you feel, because you said that this was part of the Trump administration, With the, um, how do you feel personally that Bozier is able to help or facilitate? I mean, do you feel like it's your duty, or how, how are you feeling about all that? Yes, I was, when they called, actually going back a little bit, about a year ago, uh, they called, the, the ICE officials called and were interested in us, and so we did a lot of the preliminary work back then. 
And so when they called 10 days ago, we knew we could, you know, have it ready for them within 10 days. You know, it's, it's part of national security. Uh, it's my understanding so far these individuals up there have been super cooperative, uh, kept their dorms immaculate, uh, and, and really, uh, it's, it's a sad situation if you want to know the truth. Uh, a lot of these people are risking their lives trying to get here, and uh, unfortunately we have people that live here, born here, American citizens that uh, don't appreciate what to have. And so it, it kind of gives you a new, <laughs> new outlook on life, uh, from what I understand from some of our staff already. What's the process for the de uh, deportation hearings? Are they held locally? Do you know yet? It, it's, it's our understanding that probably the average stays somewhere around 45 days, give or take, more or less. Uh, then they will be uh, moved, uh, transported back to Alexandria is the hub uh, that we will be dealing with. Uh, now there will be some um, video, a lot of video arraignments or hearings, uh, so we don't have to transport quite as often. But but our, our hub, I guess you could call it, to, to transport to would be to Alexandria. Will y'all get um, reimbursed for transportation yes, costs as yeah. well as housing? Mm -hmm. What's the reimbursement? Uh, that hasn't been determined yet. No, that's that's how fast. In fact, the gym will be here tomorrow. Uh, but uh, I know we'll get mileage and then. Uh, time and a half probably for deputies that are on, involved in the transports. And the department gets paid, I think it's 50, 62, 62 a day. That's the current uh, federal contract rate uh, that we have with the Marshal Service and we're just piggybacking that one. What's the state rate? State rate is a uh, whopping 2439 uh, headed to 19. Does that have anything to do with the decision to bring that uh, It certainly was a factor, yes. Sir. Uh, if, if the state follows through with a $5 per diem cut on our state inmates, that would affect us to the tune of about $1.8 million. And I, for one, are going to return the DOC prisoners. The, the parish of Bossier is not going to support and pay for state prisoners. The state needs to get their act together and, and take care of their business. You know where that additional money would go or what it might be used for? Uh, well, we don't have it yet, so <laughs> no, I don't know, but certainly we will use it within a department. Yeah. And you said $1.8 million from the state? If, if, if they cut our per diem five dollars a day, it would hit us for roughly one point eight million dollars. For these uh, detainees that you bring in, the deal, the state state inmates. Okay. okay. Yeah. If they reduce it from twenty four thirty nine down to the nineteen, then it would affect us. What kind of access um, are y'all working on for these folks in terms of uh, defenders or immigration attorneys? <laughs> That's we're we're just housing. Uh, okay. All that's uh, ICE officials, and they've been three or four up there every day. Uh, so they're the ones that actually are the yes, liaisons? Yes, they facilitate all that. We, we just simply house and transport. Okay. 